Given the full court press that is going on with the government uh, today, um, and basically what TVNZ plan to air tonight uh, in their documentary slot, their Tuesday documentary slot, slot is a, I think New Zealand On Air or Film Commission funded documentary called Web of Chaos that will feature amongst other people Kate Hanna from the disinformation, the dodgy and shady disinformation project and this um, gutter snipe journalist called David Farrier who just tends to engage in character assassination against people. And the Web of Chaos documentary's prime aim by the look of it is to feed the fear over the internet and disinformation, which is all part of the government strategy to get you to give up your freedom of, willingly give up your freedom of speech. One of the reasons I've taken an interest, and look, I think you can expect a Web of Chaos to have as much journalistic integrity as Fire and Fury. Okay, it's basically the same mould as Fire and Fury. But I think TVNZ need to pull this documentary tonight because in it they are going to represent Mr David Farrier as some sort of authority on ethical journalism and the truth. And here is a truth about Mr David Farrier. Uh, in late September of this year, um, in late September... So that's just last month. And a, and a, a Whanganui judge issued, under, uh, uh, issued what's called a temporary protection order against a man who is very close to David Farrier and against David Farrier as what is called an associate, associated respondent in a domestic protection order. The woman who sought this order went to a judge and said, this person who is related to me, this friend of David Farrier's, has along with David Farrier engaged in activities which have terrorised me, which have physically intimidated me, which have involved the breaking of laws, the entry into my home, the vandalism of my possessions and me being terrorised by this relation of mine. And this has been done in cahoots with Mr. David Farrier, who is a self-styled journalist and filmmaker. The judge who heard their submissions was so concerned at what they heard and found the body of evidence they presented so disturbing, so disturbing that the judge immediately ordered, without Mr. Farrier or his associate, his friend being present, issued a temporary protection order against him and also an order that Mr Farrier and his associate attend a non-violence program specified by the court. This is a very serious order and it suggests that a judge felt there was an imminent risk and danger to the mental and physical well-being of this individual and her husband. Her husband is the subject of a movie by Mr Farrier and her husband and she would argue that that movie, which is currently being flogged around and played and may be played in cinemas in New Zealand, that movie should not be aired in New Zealand as under the protection order, it is harassment, targeted harassment against this woman and her husband. I know they have gone to NetBite to try and have the movie removed offline because it is in breach of a lawful court order in New Zealand. So far, NetBite, who we will, we will be getting hold of today, have failed to act. I note, however, that Mr Farrier has not returned to New Zealand from Los Angeles to promote his movie or indeed to promote the taxpayer-funded TVNZ doco web of chaos. I can only speculate that Mr Farrier has not done that because he does not wish to be served with the temporary protection order, which by now I think has become permanent because he has not defended it or sought a hearing. Under those circumstances, I find it difficult and problematic that Television New Zealand can air a documentary 
in which they hold up an individual to be an authority on proper journalistic practice or threats to our community when that person themselves is legally defined as a threat to individuals and is under a court order to leave those people alone, to stay away from them and attend an anti-violence course. My God, if this was someone from the right, the liberal left media would be having a field day. Instead, Television New Zealand, who would have been well aware of this protection order, are promoting the program with David Farrier in it through the offices of the secretive Kate Hanna of the Disinformation Project. And do we have the clip of what she said this morning? Here's Kate Hanna spinning her fear porn on TVNZ Breakfast this morning. I know there's so much to talk about and we do so much of our social interaction online, as David Farrier mentioned there. Who do you hope watches this and, and what do you want them to take from it? I was thinking about that last night, actually, and, and I, I really hope that everybody watches it, you know, all New Zealanders, um, and that they think about the ways in which, when they're online, they might be getting fed things, manipulated by people, um, or having ideas planted in their heads, you know, this kind of idea of manufacturing um, a movement or manufacturing a sense of belonging on an internet platform. And when, you know, there's a sort of idea that when we've been sold something, we should probably be a bit suspicious. And sometimes that thing we've been sold is actually identity or a sense of belonging. You're a historian, I know, but looking forward, well, where do you think this goes? Have we reached disinformation peak? Sadly, no. It's only going to get worse. Um, I, we were talking yesterday um, about rabbit holes, and we talk about rabbit holes, and, and, and um, David's done wonderful work on rabbit holes. Um, and somebody who um, grew up on a farm said, well, you know, on farms we fill in rabbit holes. Yeah. A and we do. And so there is a, a sense in which we need to have some reflection here in Aotearoa, but also internationally, about how we do fill in those rabbit holes, what actions we can take that can um, prevent that erosion of our information landscape that takes place. Yeah, and I know you're at Ahui discussing uh, counter-terrorism and extremism today. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Kate Hanna, historian, and the documentary is called Web of Chaos. Oh, that's funny. Kate Hanna doesn't describe herself as head of the disinformation project there. And Melissa Stokes doesn't have the brains that God gave a mule and doesn't ask any critical questions. I can tell you the only disinformation, the only brainwashing going on right there is that done by Television New Zealand and Kate Hanna. And they neglect to mention that the authority, David Farrier, is under a domestic temporary domestic protection order issued by a court who believe, or a judge who believe that he has terrorised individuals. So I think TVNZ has to have a very big think about uh, airing that documentary tonight. I'm also going to say uh, the only gaslighting going on here is that being done by a compliant, and I'm sorry, incompetent news media and Kate Hanna from the Disinformation Project. Oh, yes, and they're having a security hui today and they're having their secret meetings uh, with journalists. And it is all fundamentally a propaganda campaign designed to convince you to give up your freedom of speech, to willingly acquiesce to a politically motivated and partisan world, which I'm sorry, Kate Hanna and her ilk are seeking to create. They are the threat, not your freedom. Um, and, you know, they're not trying to fill in rabbit holes. Um, people like Kate Hanna, they're trying to knock your head off and kill the rabbits. Um, that's my views anyway. Uh, let's take a break. It is uh, Sean. Oh, this just says, this is nice from Phil. Fantastic journalism on the part of the platform in regards to the David Farrier story. Thank you, Sean Plunkett. Well, a lot of people are saying those documents aren't true and Sean's doing this and he's going to get sued for defamation. Can I just say not a, not a whisper out of David Farrier who has used his uh, some thing he writes online, some webworm um, thing to say I'm a terrible man and I'm defaming him. Funny, David, I haven't heard anything from your lawyers 
And that's because the documents that I released on Twitter last night are genuine and real. And uh, the TVNZ has to explain itself editorially, unless, of course, it's just given up any idea that it's competent at what it does. Um, Sean, here's the biggest takeaway from what you just said about David Farrier. The lefties won't get pissed at David for actually committing malfeasance. They'll get pissed at you and anyone else on the right for noticing he committed malfeasance like we're obsessed. The left do everything they can to protect their own, even criminals, says Simon. Yeah, that's called gaslighting. Um, bloody good work you're doing here, Sean. Our mainstream news media is sad. They are the threat. I'm sorry, James. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, and this evidence comes to me. I do not seek it out. Uh, and I can only draw the conclusions that I am drawing. And I, I would say again to Kate Hanna, you are welcome on this program at any time to have a discussion about the work that you do for the Disinformation Project and the growing disquiet at how you carry out that work. But I will give you a fair hearing. I will not conduct my journalism behind closed doors in a, a Chatham House rule uh, environment. I will not exclude anyone uh, apart from the real, real anti-vax nutters, uh, from the platform. Um, we are always here to talk with you, Kate, because you've said, you're on the record, Kate Hanna, of saying you want more open and honest conversations. So do we. Uh, but that doesn't mean gaslighting people. And I would say to people, the producers at TVNZ and RNZ and News Hub and stuff, God, learn how to do your jobs. You are not propagandists for the woke left and the government of the day. That is not doing your job. That is not doing your job. That is anti the job you should do, which is to seek out and tell the truth without fear or favour. And that is why the platform, uh, to be honest, that's why the platform exists and that is why it is here. Um, Sean, after hearing your interview with Charlie McCaw yesterday, I then watched his video on the Disinformation Project, and my word, it was very eye-opening. What I find interesting is people like Kate Hanna say one thing in an interview on national TV, then something completely different the next to justify her findings. Thank you, Sean. I really appreciate what you and your team do. Cheers, Rich. You are welcome, Rich. Um, is there another joker with a similar name? Yeah, yes, there is, Hugh. His, he's Farrah, not Farrier. Um, Sean, I watched the half-hour film by Charlie McCoy, McCoy on YouTube this morning. I'm amazed at how Jacinda, like Kate Hanna, is in her mannerisms and her very animated hand gestures while talking, disturbing, really. I often find that when people are so animated to get their points across while talking to you, their points are often not worth their animation. Just an observation, says Dave, and it's a very, very, very good observation, Dave. Oh, dear. David Farrier, who is he, says Hugh. Hugh, he's a guy who pretends to be a journalist and basically makes gets, gets a bee in his bonnet about people and does hit jobs on them that he then passes off as movies. He's a defamatory gutter snipe. That's who David Farrier is, but he's a darling of the left and of people like the Disinformation Project. He's also a guy who has a temporary protection order against him and has been ordered uh, to attend a, an anti-violence course um, and would be, appear to be reluctant to return to the country because he doesn't want to get served with that protection order, which was issued under the auspices of the family court. And if you go on my Twitter account, you can read most of the documents.